Do you guys hear that? That is pretty much the theme music for Alone in the Dark. One of my favorite games of all time. Actually, my favorite of all time. I only own a trilogy set. This is a little too loud. I only own the trilogy set. So basically what this game is, is your basic survival horror game. It's like a, uh, kind of like Resident Evil in that face. Where you just go around, collect items, and try to beat the game. First game, it's, uh, in the first adventure, Carnby confronts many foes of evil and the darkness of Dorico, or whatever. A house where entering is easy, but leaving could be hell. What this basically means is the very beginning intro, they pretty much show you walk into the house, you walk into the attic, you start from the very top of the attic, and you gotta work your way out of the house. On the way there, it's basically monsters come and attack you, you can collect shot. There's only two guns in this this first game, just a shotgun and a revolver. And what you do with a shot, you just shoot things, basically. Shoot bad guys. Usually it's just zombies and monsters. And there's hidden traps, like if you go the wrong way, the floorboards will open up and you'll fall to your death. The thing I like about this game is you can save it anytime you want. It makes the game easy, uh, fun, and you can keep playing it. It's not like one of those games where it's like too hard. I don't think it's a hard game. The controls are hard, though. I'll say that, though. The soundtrack that you're listening to is from the second game, because I thought the second game had the best music. This game was made on DOS, and DOS pretty much only for at least the first the first game. You also can get the first one on 3DO. It doesn't play as well as the PC version, but it's still, it's a little in the dark, and it's, you know, from 1992. So it's very tough to find this game. And then, the second game, you could find... They actually made a PlayStation version, so you can find that probably at a, a GameStop doesn't sell PlayStation games anymore. They're all PS2 now. But you can go one, to one of your old used video game stores, and I bet you they might have it. Most likely not. But they may. Also, the third one, you could only play on the PC. It was made in 1995, I believe. And basically, for this one, you can't find it. Unless if you're going to play it on a DOS computer. The only way you can play the game is on DOS. You can try to load it in through Windows, but most likely it doesn't work. At least on XP. You probably can load it in through like Windows 95 or Windows 98 and it may work. Or you might just get to see the introduction and then the game's over. It won't work. Usually, the games never work. because Just because it's such an old game. So, anyways, I'll get back to what I was talking about how the game is. The first game, after uh, you, you, you pretty much make your way through the attic, make your way downstairs, and then you pick up various items such as bow and arrows and stuff like that. You don't know what you're going to use with them until you get to that point. Every item usually has its own use, except for one item which throws everyone off that's played this game. Is There's this pot of stew, and there's, there's, no, there's no point to that. Oh yeah, there is. I figured that out too. Never mind. So every every item has its own point. Uh, there's stuff that you can do if you forget certain things. At least in this game, you can always backtrack your steps and go find it again. Unlike other games where you miss an item and you continue on throughout the game and you save over to that spot, can't go back. Well, then you got to start the whole game over again, and that just can that can get real frustrating. Anyways, that's basically the first game. The first game doesn't really have much of a plot. And everyone says, uh, well not everyone, because not too many people play this game. Guys that have played this game say that the first one was the best. I disagree, I think the second one is, and that's when I'll prove it. I'm not, I can't really prove it, but I'll tell you why. The second game is, I have a plot, and I'll read it for you right now. It says, Carnby battles against the powers of voodoo, in this sequel to save an 8 year old girl kidnapped by gangs of evil zombie bootleggers dueling in Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen, California. So this place has got a plot where it is. 
what you do for this game is you walk into the uh, you walk in you walk into this like kind of like garden kind of thing garden of death I guess you would say and you walk right in and you have to kill the first guy to collect your Tommy gun and then you shoot guys and it's pretty much the same concept of the first game except you can it's cool because you can shoot ghosts with your Tommy gun these are pretty much dead ghosts and the foe you're looking for is One-Eyed Jack. One-Eyed Jack allied himself with Elizabeth Jarrett who's an evil voodooist that can uh, that's if they make this innocent girl grow old they can take over the world and your job is just pretty much to prevent that from happening save the world kind of thing but it Carnby's that's just the main character in the game he's pretty badass because he just pretty much gives nobody mercy shoots everyone you can shoot anyone in this game and it won't no one's your friend just put it that way you have no friends in this game so don't think that just because a guy doesn't come after you right away kill the bastard because he'll come back they always do. And you may pretty much make your way through the maze, get into the house, and work your way to the pirate ship and have a final sword fight with one eye jack, which is actually kind of fun. Then, after you beat that, you go and play the third game. The third game is basically a game that has... You walk into... It's kind of a Wild West theme, more like. And... In the Wild West, you pretty much, pretty much same concept from the first and second game. You kill things, you collect items. I mean, the one thing I love about this trilogy is that it's the same. It's not the same game, but it's the same concept. Where you know, like you see sequels, to some, like the Resident Evil sequels. They're all pretty much the same concept, the same kind of gameplay, and, and that's why the franchise has been successful. It's the main reason why this franchise was successful when it first came out. I mean, now it's pretty much obsolete, but in the French, and it was made by iMotion. Then they fucked it all up after the third game. They actually made a fourth game, and it was for PlayStation or PlayStation 2. It was made by uh, Darkworks, I think it was, or it was, I mean, it was, a, it was pretty much a Resident Evil ripoff, and that was something Alone in the Dark was completely different from Resident Evil, is the fact it was a survival horror game, but it allowed more sur uh, mystery part of the game. It was more of a mystery game where you had to figure things out kind of game. And that's something, I know Resident Evil's like that too, but Resident Evil is pretty much out to scare you. Like, just get in your face, like, freak you out, kind of scary. Alone in the Dark really didn't scare you at all, maybe if you read the books and it kind of freak, creeped you out, how about that? It was, a, it was a creepy game for its time, I and mean, there were books you could read, you didn't have to read them, but there were books you could read, you found out the stories and how some of these guys are evil, and it's just, it, it kind of would creep you out if you actually read it. And also, the fourth game is, uh, I'd recommend it, because it actually is a good game, it, it'll, it'll, sh it'll freak the shit out of you, because... This, if you get into the game, and one thing I think, uh, uh, who is it now? Somebody made a review, well, not really a review, but, oh yeah, Monoxide said something about, uh, being connected to, the, like, he made a movie review on Halloween or something where you could be connected to your, uh, connected to your video game character, or something, or connected to the movie character. Well, this is the game you get real connected with your character, and that what makes it a real successful game, I think. The main reason why I like it. So, yeah, don't see the movie. There was a movie that was released, don't see that. But, guys, check out Alone in the Dark 5. It's supposed to be a good game. It's coming out... Oh, shit. They said it was supposed to come out last month, but it's not out yet. But it's supposed to come out for the PS3, Xbox 360, and I heard it's coming out for the Wii and the PC. I doubt the Wii, though. They, they like to lie like that. But anyways, it's supposed to be, if you don't, uh, if you never heard of the game, I'll include a link into this, in the description about the, uh, the trailer for the game. It's basically based on survival rather than horror. It's, it's supposed to pretty much put, put your instincts of survival. And, like I said, I'll post the link so you can guys can check it out. It's supposed to be the fourth game, and uh, I might even include a link for maybe some, someone on YouTube's got some gameplay for this. Anyways, this is Mad Dog Out.